This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna look at scan my Tesla in the Tesla model. Yeah, there's a new sound by the way. It has this gentle horn for uh, saying that it locked the door. So in the other Teslas before, they were much louder. But okay, so today we will look at the BMS and see what's inside. So let me show you now. Um, this is a long range Model Y. That's the only one that is available anyway. And if you look here, it's been existing for a while now in also Model 3 is that you have OBD port there, but when I hook on it, well, I can show you what happens. We can use this uh, adapter here that I always use in actually every car I connect, like Leaf or i3 or ID3, ID4. I use the same adapter. So let's plug it in. See how they do this. Don't remember which side. You just have to feel your way up there and then, yeah. okay. Now let's see, if you look here now, open sky my Tesla, it will be something like this, initializing adapter, connecting, setting filters, and then blank screen. There is nothing. You can try the other tabs, battery tab. It would just say setting filter as if something would happen, but then no data. I try restarting everything. I try to switch to the right uh, car, it's not working. But in the back of the Model Y, fortunately, it works just like a Model 3. You have this cover, well, I think it's uh, supposed to be like this. So it sits there. In the Model 3, the floor goes around here. So you can, you can probably recognize what it looks like in the Model 3 versus Model Y. So Model Y is taller. And then you just pop this connector open, you see, I connected this adapter. So there'll be a link in the description how to get it. Some, some uh, German guy makes it. And then when you hook the, uh, the OBD adapter to this one, let me see if I can do it with one hand. Like this, yeah, you see? Okay, now just push it in. Now we should get some uh, useful data. So this is a performance tab. And um, if I press the brake pedal now, you will suddenly see more uh, uh, virals, the, the front power and the rear power and all that. Uh, but okay, so we had 89.4% state of charge seat there. You see, we're actually pulling uh, 55. No, no, about one kilowatt. Yeah, about one kilowatt. I think the, the heater is going a bit aggressive. Maybe I should lower the fan speed. Okay. Maybe, yeah, because the car's been sitting uh, out, well, actually in the garage, so maybe it's cold. You see now it should go lower but the max discharge power 313 kilowatts okay i think that's uh, a little over 400 horsepower a battery is not too hot you can see cell 10 mid here 26 degrees so normal uh, battery temperature hmm yeah i think that's about the same this is what you can expect in uh, in the long range model 3 also for example the this 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 kind of power 300 400 something horsepower um everything else looks normal here you see the battery flow here it's around six liter per minute. That's when it's in the resting state. Uh, battery inlet, is it actually trying to heat up the battery state? No, 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 no I don't think so. Stators are cold, 26 degrees. Let's try to navigate to uh, a supercharger nearby. Let's see. Then it should preheat. There, preconditioning. And now you see suddenly battery power goes up, six kilowatt. Um, you see the front and the rear. Wait, is it okay? Right now it's stationary. So the front pulls 2.5 kilowatt. The rear, yeah, okay, it ramps up. This is uh, what happens when you preheat. Tesla do, does some smart engineering. They use the existing hardware to do several things. So they will then run the motors in inefficiency mode, something like a ninja mode, uh, to generate heat, and then they scavenge that heat to heat to the battery quite smart just like uh, the koreans they use the the existing um inverter in the rear motor to generate uh, to <laughs> to transform a 400 volt from the 400 volt charger to 800 volt when they are charging on the on 400 volt chargers uh, but i believe the taikan they actually have a dedicated hardware i'm not sure about taikan but yeah i have the indication on it but okay anyway 
So let's just show you here for you guys who haven't seen it before. Yeah, now you see that the battery inlet goes up. This is an indication that it's trying to heat up the battery. And also you see here battery flow. Oh, oh, oops. 8. Point, yeah, so the, the, the loops that now run at higher uh, circulation. I'm gonna constant navigation to the supercharger. You see that takes a couple of seconds and then boom. You can also hear in the background. So now you guys have seen it. This looks normal. You see a battery flow goes down. Uh, but this is just uh, a selection of variables I have chosen to see. So uh, we can, for example, see in the all time instead. They can see everything. So I will just show you everything because then you <laughs> otherwise you guys will ask me, hey, did you look at that tab? Do you look at this tab? So voltage on the pack is 393. That, that looks normal for 90% or 89% state of charge. Uh, let's see, radiate the fan target. Okay, the five. Well, here, this is um, not updated. It's not five wave valve. It's uh, octaval, eight wave, uh, eight way uh, valve now. Uh, we have all the front power, rear power here, but we're still stationary. Let me see. Yeah, max this up. Max region 60 kilowatt. Ooh, yeah, that sounds about right. 60 kilowatt region power because we have somewhat high state of charge. I think no, um, if you have lower state of charge and or if the battery is warmer, then we can get 85 kilowatt, just like a Model 3. Should be like that. Okay, th this is weird. Max pack voltage. Uh -huh. uh, some of these values might be weird. It's just something that the Scamma Tesla receives. So it's, Scamma Tesla is just displaying the variables. But anyway, um, max charge power. Oh, okay. Steering angle, let's just show you here. See, if I turn the steering wheel, steering angle changes a little bit there. Um, accelerate pedal also here, see. Full throttle goes to 100%. Yeah, and then it says <laughs> shift to D through, yeah. Okay, consumption, yeah, DC charge throttle. So it's been mostly AC charge, but you see the car is almost branch banking new. DC charge. I have to, yeah. I have to reset this trip. It's, uh, it's just based on some other reference. Uh, this is, is resetted, because you can actually set up a trip, uh, take a checkpoint, and then compare it against another checkpoint. That's why it looks a bit weird. But okay, not too much interesting stuff going on here. The DIC odometer here, only 94 uh, kilometers driven. Uh, distance is part of the trip thing. But here, here's the juicy stuff that we'll see. Normal full pack. 73.7 so you know when i tested the latest uh, and greatest model 3 with 613 kilometers of range that one had uh, oh i don't remember how much was it again i think it was 77 was it 77 kilowatt hour but this looks like the old pack um 73.7 why oh, it goes up <laughs> okay um and then the buffer is 3.3 so so it means that well, actually, based on these numbers we see here, it could look, could look like we get only 70 kilowatt hour from it. Wait, huh? Only 70 kilowatt hour? That sounds like even less than the LG pack. Well, I thought we had the LG pack, but it could seem like we even have less energy than the, the previous generation Model 3. Because from what I remember, it was... Uh, oof, I don't remember the numbers right now. But at least you guys see the numbers here. So, um, okay, and then use the remaining 62, yeah. So, um, what this, by the way, what this means is that the nominal full pack, the 73.7, is if you charge the car to 100%, and then you drive it all the way to zero until it stops below 0%. And this energy buffer here is at 0%, you will still have 3.3 kilowatt hour energy buffer. And then if you drive carefully, you can usually drive around 20 kilometers past zero when the battery is well balanced and calibrated. But then there will be cases where it might stop before the 3.3 kilowatt hour is used. So, um, okay, whatever, let me see. Yeah, and then again, Skyma Tesla reports this full pack when new 74.5. And then it calculates battery degradation. This is a bit uh, weird. Um, it's just variables supplied by the car. Uh, so you might be thinking, oh, you already have uh, almost 1% degradation. The car is branch banking new. Well, I don't know how they, how you're supposed to count degradation. Uh, this could be a long topic just to talk about degradation. Uh, for example, let me just uh, use the example. BMW i3, the, the latest, the 120 amp hour, when it comes from the factory, it's actually in in uh, um, it was a different app 
uh, electrified app, it shows up as 129 amp hour, and then it starts dropping. After uh, after a week or so, it dropped to 128, and I guess soon enough, after maybe a couple of months, it will drop to 120 amp hour. So, do you count degradation from 129? amp hour or do you count it from 120 amp hour right anyway um battery flow okay some temperature here and there uh you must show you show you stuff here cell imbalance okay a battery inlet da, 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 outside temperature uh yeah just showing you all the the stats discharge uh, yeah it's, it's not much to see since the car is branch banking new uh, let me see the 12 volt battery is at there. So 12 volts seems like it's in good good uh, voltage Yeah, here also this is also some, some range numbers Based on uh, what is in the display. I think if we charge it to 100% We should get 498 kilometers and then if we switch on the display it should switch to display Percentage right now. I'm gonna switch it to uh, display distance. Let me just verify uh, yeah, it shows up as 442 kilometers on this screen and then we have 443 here and then for some reason yeah, This also happens from time to time that uh, It bugs like this um, I'm not sure if it's that that cable adapter thing there or which because It tends to happen more often with the old cable I have uh, So usually what I have to do is I have to just unhook it in the back here and then plug it in again and then wait wait a little while and then it will uh, fix itself but uh, it could also be I talked to the guy who made this app uh, that uh, sometimes if there's too many packages it just gets overflow uh, oh, there's some overflow or something and then it bugs so of course if you're in the alt tab you will receive all the packages all of them but then I usually not don't stay in this tab I will stay in another tab and that's slightly better I don't know if it also has something to do with my uh, my adapter. Maybe I should. Oh, this is yeah. <laughs> now you guys actually see. It. Normally, I uh, I cut out this part where it's trying to connect. Uh, but again, this could also happen to you if you also try to use Scamma Tesla and then it bugs, and you might have to try to fix it somehow. So yeah, sometimes, uh, most of the time, it will fix itself. But you see, <laughs> this case. It's still not uh, reset. So sometimes if this happens, what I usually do is I just exit uh, the app. Okay, okay. Let's just close it completely. Here you see I have many, I have many, many different apps for, uh, for uh, car, different cars. Usually when I do something like this, uh, exit the whole app and then start it again. It should work. Let's see then. Well, uh, I don't know what the heck happened. I had to go to Millennium Falcon, hook up the adapter there, and then reset a couple of times, and then it found it. And now we came back here, and now it's working. So it's a big mystery. But that was actually the bottom of the list. I see it now. Yeah, we had no other variables. And I think, yeah, oh, this in the Model 3 and Model Y, you don't see that the tab with all the... Uh, it's just this one. <clears throat> in the Model uh, SX, you can also see the all the cell uh, individually. But, okay. So it could seem like we have around, like I said before, um, 70, we have around 70 kilowatt hour when we charge the full and we go down to only zero. I don't count uh, below zero. And then we can uh, guess, guess the range based on that. But I will of course do a dedicated uh, range test to measure the actual energy we get out of the battery when driving. So that will be covered in another day. Uh, it's, by the way, it's too windy nowadays for me to do any range tests. It's just really windy. So I will actually wait until Monday before I do my range test. And then I will do charging test, acceleration test. I think I will actually do the full acceleration test from, uh, from uh, 90 to 10 percent. So we also measure uh, how much the power output is and we will also do a charging test uh, not sure which battery this is but of course we're going to check it uh, so yes i think that's going to be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later